Since the beginning, Westminster Canterbury has always promoted independence and dignity for both its residents and those associated with the organization. Westminster has impacted many throughout the years, serving as a home for some, a place of employment for others, and a community for all. Join us now on a journey to discover how a dream became a thriving reality for the city of Lynchburg. Dad had been in the real estate business for, at that time, probably 35 years. We were both Episcopalians. I grew up at St. John's. His grandfather helped build the church. And I remember him coming in the office one day and saying, talking about the Presbyterians and the Episcopalians were thinking about building a retirement community. And they'd asked him to start looking for property for it. Such was the beginning of Westminster Canterbury. For six months, Payne searched for property around Lynchburg that would fit the mold of the community. After diligently searching, Payne found some land that he thought would suit the new retirement community and decided to share the news with his son. He was talking about putting a little bit from VES and a little bit from the orphanage and putting it together. And it looked pretty rough at the time. It was in the country. And uh, I remember thinking, or I remember, I guess I asked him, I said, well, what about the location? He said, son, this will be the best location they could have in Lynchburg. And he ultimately was, of course, correct. The board agreed with Payne, and plans began to finance the retirement community. Tasked with gathering the finance committee, Payne called on a gentleman by the name of Al Kemper. Kemper was more than happy to join the committee and later became the chairman. In the fall of 1976, I believe, uh, I was asked to serve in some capacity in connection with the capital fund drive. So what I did was to line up a number of community leaders. But I lined up people like Bernard C. Baldwin, Jr., better known as Buster, and he was one of the top trust and estate lawyers in Lynchburg. After struggling financially for some time due to a lack of donations, a miracle happened. A woman by the name of Mrs. Oscar Drinkard donated half a million dollars to the campaign. Ms. Drinkard called Buster Baldwin and said that she had had a dream and the good Lord wanted her to give the Westminster campaign a half million dollars. After receiving the $500,000 gift, Baldwin proposed Westminster use it as a matching gift to raise more money for their cause. The one thing that I would be remiss if I didn't say, the existence of Westminster Canterbury Lynchburg, we are forever indebted to Buster Baldwin he was the one who came up with the idea of the half a million dollar matching gift, and he had already gotten $100,000 from Ms. Drinkard. So he had a whole lot to do with the raising of that $1 million, and that was really what got Westminster Canterbury off and running. Even in its early stages, Westminster Canterbury residents found it to be a place that they could trust with their health and well-being. What started as a vision became a reality as residents began to fill the vacancies of the new retirement community. When we first moved in, we were just, we felt free to do what we wanted to do, not we had to mow the grass or cook or something, but we just uh, enjoyed being together. We went on wonderful trips. We went to Annapolis. I drove the bus. Went to, to the Naval Academy and did. we went to uh, Williamsburg. We also went down to the mountains of North Carolina. With Westminster's focus on life, it was important for the community to offer health care services to the residents to ensure that their wellness needs were complete. Interestingly enough was when they 
first opened up the healthcare side, there were five patients. With so few patients in its early stages, Westminster decided to bring in a part-time physician to tend to the needs of the residents within the community. We had a, a physician who was, would come over here occasionally, maybe once, uh, once or twice a month, and they would make appointments. But most of the residents had their own physicians, and so they would go out. Now, as we have extended our health care and all, we have a physician who's here. If you do not have a physician, then you can ask for this one who is on the staff now. The nurses were interested in that they had about five registered nurses working on the floors, and then they had the LPNs and CNNs. And it would be interesting for me to think about, wonder what they did. Do it, you know, when there were just so few patients over there. But obviously it didn't take too long for them to, you know, accumulate and also start asking people from the outside who would come in and they would ad admit the, the um, outside community. So it filled up more at that point. As the healthcare needs of the residents grew, so did the capabilities of Westminster adding facilities and staff members to meet the community's needs. These staff members took the time to learn the residents that they were assisting and build relationships with them. I've been employed at Westminster for 25 years. It's interesting, when I came here I said I was going to stay one year, but here I am 24 years later, and I have really enjoyed Westminster. I've taken care of the residents. Some of them that stick in my mind was a gentleman who was on the team that designed the first IBM home computers. I took care of him here. I also took care of the gentleman that was on the team that designed the prototype for the Apple iPod, the music and they gave him one and he was in his 90s and he would, I work at night, so he would be up in the night listening to his songs. <laughs> There have been many changes over the years. Um, the buildings have been redesigned inside to make it more suitable for the time and the age. As years went by, Westminster's vision continued to expand. Around 1996, the Board of Trustees thought it would be worthwhile to offer an additional option to its independent living residents. Soon after, Westminster purchased 21 acres of adjacent land and the construction of the community's cottages began. Living here in the cottage has been absolutely lovely. We came when there was no grass, no trees, no bushes. We were among the first ones to sign up on paper. We were not the first ones to move in because we had to wait until the road was built. Construction of the cottages was completed in 1998. By the end of the project, 36 new homes were available. The residents were very pleased with the new level of independence that could be achieved through life in the cottages. Particularly living here in a, in a cottage, the amenities of having a yard and a patio and, and a street that looks like something I lived on all my life and not, it's not institutional kind of living, it's just pleasant and, and spacious and a good, good life. We decided we needed to raise money to do new dining and to build a pool, new wellness facility, a uh, new health care facility. We had a second fundraiser to remodel the lobby, to put in the swimming pool, the fitness center, and to do some other renovations. Through its fundraising campaign, Westminster raised $1.7 million, allowing them to open the wellness center in 2001 which contained a pool, an exercise facility, and locker rooms. 
I saw them built the pool, and I am a swimmer, so I used to get off in the mornings and go swimming. When we came, there was just one bicycle as an exercise option. Then there was the expansion of the pool came in, lots of machines to do the legs or arms or whatever with Denise's uh, help. You know, she can guide us. Uh, it's really wonderful. The Wellness Center was just the beginning of what Westminster had in store for its residents. Launching Project 2002, Westminster started construction on brand new apartments, a state-of-the-art memory support unit, and began renovations on some of the more dated parts of the campus, beginning with the dining facilities. I have seen three renovations of the dining room. Believe you me, we have gone a long way and it is absolutely wonderful. The next addition to be completed were the Woods Edge Apartments, which placed 41 additional apartments on the Westminster campus. We also wanted to build Woods Edge. We needed more independent living units. So Woods Edge was built to meet the demand for larger uh, residences. The last major addition within Project 2002 was the 14-bed memory support unit, providing a safe and secure space for residents and individuals who suffer from memory loss. My husband lived to 2012, so he was here through all the cares of, for Alzheimer's disease and did live two years in the facility built especially for persons with that disease. So I would be able to live in the cottage and go see him morning, noon, and evening. But they really took wonderful care of, of the people in memory support. Other renovations beginning in 2003 included the addition of a chapel, the Strickler Library, and the refurbishment of the bridge. We did a lot on the bridge, as a matter of fact, if I remember correctly. Um, it was a place where people met each other. They had little tables with coffee pots and coffee cups and everything from one or two scattered about on the edge of the bridge and a table around so you could sit and have coffee and visit. to have a foundation, we needed to have funds set aside to help people who ran out of money through no fault of their own. And in 2006, in October, we had our first meeting of the foundation and put together our bylaws and got it working and set about raising money so that we would have a vehicle and a place to keep the money to take care of our residents who needed it in years to come. And it's going strong now. In 2007, Westminster officially launched the WC Foundation, giving his residents peace of mind, knowing that financial aid was available to those who needed it. The Fellowship Endowment is something that sets the Westminster Canterbury's, uh, makes them somewhat unique in that uh, once you move here, if for some reason you should have a financial catastrophe, you don't have to worry about it. The fellowship fund picks up everything and is totally confidential. So no one who lives here has any idea, unless you choose to tell them, that you're receiving care, and they certainly can't tell it by the way you live. If you've got a car, we keep that going. If you, whatever it is, you, you the Fellowship Endowment makes sure that your lifestyle doesn't change.
By 2010, Westminster Canterbury was thriving. Having gone through another set of building expansions and small remodeling projects, residents were very content. A huge part of their success can be attributed to their longtime CEO, Hunston H. Carey III. H. Carey and our board were so instrumental of getting Westminster up and running back in 1980. Carey served as the first CEO of the retirement community and was always known to work diligently to build a strong rapport with both the residents and the staff. In 2010, he retired from Westminster after 34 years of service. Soon after, the board hired Sean Hewitt as both president and CEO. So having been here about eight years, you have uh, a great history that I stepped into. A privilege for me to be here to try to carry on that tradition of what they've been doing for so long of caring and uh, taking care of people and seniors in Central Virginia. When we talk about health care, uh, it is more than just uh, providing medical services. It's truly loving care that's given to the people who are here, and that is to me the most important thing. We are a five-star organization. We get wonderful approvals. I think they work very hard to continue to improve the nursing care. After many years of healthcare success and recognition, Westminster knew that it was time to add to their selection of services. Having already launched Senior Independence in 2010, an entity that focuses on home health care, Westminster decided to add hospice care in 2015. As Westminster continued to grow, residents and staff began settling into the Westminster way of life. In 1980, my mother, we moved her up here. She fell in love with the place after some initial getting used to things, and she had a delightful time, made friends very easily, loved to play cards, bridge, get out and get around with folks, and had a delightful time. There's so many things here to activities and people involved to do things that are both constructive and interesting and helpful in their way. One of them that I have been particularly interested in is the St. John's Men's Book Club, and it is backed up by St. John's Episcopal Church. We'll have a party. Last week we had a luau party. We have Father's Day, we have Mother's Day, we have of course, Thanksgiving, all of that are special meals. They really do treat us beautifully. The food is great. Westminster was becoming a home to so many residents. They felt comfortable sharing their ideas about how to make the community a better place for all who resided there. I'll never forget when I came here in 99, after been here maybe a month, and got a call from a resident who lived in one of the cottages who said, Mr. Payne, we haven't met, but I want to talk to you about the nature trail. Uh, we, we got in the car one fall weekend and went up to Alexandria and looked at a nature trail that she thought was what we ought to have. And then 11 years later, it was a reality, and it is now. It's totally completed. Westminster provided an atmosphere where residents and staff could interact on a more personal level. Many staff were impressed by the people they encountered and continued to build lasting friendships with them. Interaction with the residents here has just always been great. And it's getting better over the years because there's more employee resident gatherings. The staff is absolutely unbelievable. Kind, helpful, uh, thoughtful. They, they're here really to help us. It's treated more like a family 
care when people used to keep the elderly in their homes and they were surrounded by friends and families and all. If you look back through our history from 1980, the other Westminster Canterburys as well have always been known as leaders in their field. And we're probably the first Westminster Canterbury of the six in the state that are taking it with our new uh, healthcare center, which is going to deliver resident directed care. That's something very, very new and very much ahead of the field. And one of the attractions that I find living here, and I'm looking forward to that being here. This person-centered approach will allow residents of the new health care center more choices about activities and how they interact with the caregiving team. The importance of uh, what our health care facility represents now from the changes when my mother was here down the long halls and distances sometimes from the nursing station was the fact that uh, it was pretty regimented. Things have changed. For years, we, uh, as an industry, have always taken care of people by walking in, getting them up, brought out to breakfast. And this model really gives some autonomy back to the resident to have choice uh, when they want to eat, when they want to wake up. The other side of the model is how we treat our, our staff and how um, we provide opportunities and training, growth opportunities for leadership but give them more autonomy so that decisions aren't being made out of the offices here at administration. That people every day are able to give answers and take care of problems as they occur and not have to run them back up the organizational chart to get something done. Uh, we want to make sure we just uh, have a lot more respect, uh, dignity for how we treat and work with each other and that will also obviously carry over to our residents and the families that we work with. Westminster has come a long way since its beginning in 1980 and still continues to grow. Whether that is an expansion or more renovations is unknown. But what is known is that Westminster Canterbury Lynchburg will continue to strive for the health and wellness of each resident and employee. We have something very special here. Um, and people really begin to realize it, I think, when they move here. Obviously since I understand that there are people waiting in line to get here. This is a pretty decent place to live. Lots to do, lots of nice people. People believe in what we have now and have worked hard to make it the good place that it is. To watch it grow has really been um, a wonderful experience. It was a wonderful place to work. I loved the rest of them. I have enjoyed working at Westminster immensely. I sort of came home when I came to Westminster Canterbury and it feels good. Mm -hmm.